Focus our eyes on the journey Stepping into the unknown Waving goodbye to our worry And we're ready to go Hey everybody, we are back uh, I think this is part seven of our Barnuminium build. Uh, I know we missed a week last week and I apologize for that. There just wasn't anything going on. We didn't have any updates. Um, bad <laughs> there news. was a little something going on, but, but it wasn't really anything we could talk about at that point in time. Yeah. <laughs> bad news is we failed our very first inspection. And that's what was going on. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, of course, an airplane flies over right about the time we start recording. <laughs> Always. Uh, but anyways, we, we did fail the first inspection, which kind of caught us by surprise, honestly. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, we thought we had dotted all of our I's, crossed all of our T's. We was trying very hard to make sure we did due diligence on everything and made sure we had everything right. Mm -hmm. uh, but it turned out it was just, a, honestly, kind of a little fluke. Yep. When we were submitting our building permit, uh, there was one document that they came back and said they needed, which was the peer placement, which we... I didn't see on the original instruction part. It, it was not listed in the requirements, even though they do need that. It wasn't listed, and so we just forgot about it and didn't include it in yeah. our packet. So we kind of had to hustle to get that together. So we got with our builder, and uh, of course he went on his CAD program and and just did the standard peer placements on there. Yeah, he just did just preliminary. To, just to get something out there so that we could submit submit it to him. And right. the reason why we did that, and, and knowing that we might have to move a few of them was because they told us at the uh, uh, building permit office, they said it don't have to be exact. Right, just something to give them an idea. And so that's what we did. Right. And then when it came time to actually drill for the holes and everything, mm -hmm. we, we started looking at window placements because we placed our window order that week and had all the windows finalized. There was a couple of piers we had to move, you know, maybe a foot or two this way or a foot or two this way, just so it didn't land in the middle of a window. Right. We thought we was all good because, again, we was told at the builder permit office that, you know, we could do that. Well, then when the inspector got out there, the first thing he did was lay out what the design was, and he said, your peers don't line up. It doesn't match. And I was like, <laughs> well, no, duh. <laughs> so it was a little misunderstanding more right. than anything. Uh, you know, under normal circumstances, I wouldn't have submitted something knowing I was going to have to change it, but we were just trying to get the building permit finalized uh, because we were so far behind on getting everything else done. And so, you know, it is what it is. Uh, we talked to the inspector and he said, hey, you know, if you can just get me, uh, you know, a letter from your engineer showing that, you know, they moved these because of the windows and everything's going to be fine. It doesn't affect the structural integrity of the building right. we're good and so it took a few days to get that but we, we did get it yeah we got that we submitted, submitted back it and we're approved now and yeah. we're back on track so yeah we are we are approved it was just a little hiccup <laughs> but that hiccup took us a week to solve so with that being said make sure you check into what is needed in your your local community um, for your inspections and then you know talk to people when you get your inspections if you do happen to get a, you know a fail on one of your inspections talk to the inspector and find out you know what are the ways you can can fix it because if you get all upset about it then that's probably going to be off putting oh, yeah. to them and, and you may hit a wall there yeah and the last thing you want to do is is have a building inspector pissed off at you <laughs> i'll just be you know i'll just tell you that at front it's com should be common sense but uh but i mean the guy was super nice when oh, he, yeah, when he was, was out fine. there you know we have we actually have a camera up out there so i knew when he showed up out there and i kind of watched him going around measuring everything mm -hmm. and honestly from the camera everything looked like we was doing good mm -hmm. uh but then he called me and said we failed yeah uh, but <laughs> that's Surprise. that's that's the big thing and I, and I really appreciate him because he called me he yes. didn't just send me an email or send me a text saying we failed he called me and explained right and, and so, step by step, I mean, he went through everything and even gave us some tips about our future inspections as well. Yes, and yeah. so we was able to talk through because again, this type of building, and and he told me he said he don't he don't he doesn't recollect this type of building for a home being built in the county we're building in, mm -hmm. and so we're kind of the guinea pigs. <laughs> and he was upfront and honest. He said, you know, he said, I'll tell you, he said the guinea pig normally suffers some pain. Yeah. <laughs> and so, but hopefully we'll blaze the way for other people because right. I do believe other people, once they see these in our community, are going to want some built. Mm -hmm. And uh, so maybe I can help people out further down the road so they don't run into so many obstacles. But he did tell us, you know, it is very unusual. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and because it's different, you know, some of these codes and have been in place for you know years, ten, twenty years, and they don't really apply to a barn dominium. And when as you're doing, much. yeah, yeah. And, and we're doing all steel, so we can span a larger area between the between the piers mm -hmm. because we're doing steel and very thick steel at that. And so you know, it doesn't conform to the normal code. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be the rub. And we knew that going into this. We knew that would be a challenge. We was even very careful when we went and did our building permit not to say we're building a barnuminium. We said we're building a post frame construction mm -hmm. with metal siding. You know, we didn't label it because a lot of people, as soon as you throw that word barnuminium out there, they start, I mean, it's just like red flags go off. Right. And uh, it causes a lot of problems. Uh, we were not deceptive at all. We did tell everybody that we are building a, a steel framed home. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is our home. It is our primary residence. Just it's got a really big workshop and, a really and garage big workshop. on it. Um, and, and we did disclose everything that it's yes. all going to be metal siding, metal roof, steel structure. Yeah. When um, we took all the paperwork down there to the building permit office, we was very upfront with them. When we've talked to the power company, I've been very upfront mm -hmm. with them because I don't want to shortchange anybody, and I want to make sure that we have everything in place that we need in place. Like I say, we we like dotting our eyes and crossing our mm -hmm. T's. We don't like being deceptive. We like being honest and upfront. Yes. And then that way we can deal with any of those problems then rather than right in the middle of it. Right. Or worse yet, put something up and then have to take it down and redo something. Right. And so we have been very upfront. But like I said, I appreciate the inspector over there for calling me. Uh, I guess we spent almost 30 minutes on the mm -hmm. phone talking through everything. And uh, we there is going to be a few other challenges uh, going forward. He let mm -hmm. us know that up front, building this type of building, simply because it may not adhere to code even though it's 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 going to be structurally sound and it's structurally engineered mm -hmm. it may not exactly fit the code so that we there's going to be some hurdles we have to jump through there and we'll address all those as we come up on them i ain't going to do them yet right. until we get there but as we come up on them just like this one right here where we're talking about where we failed the first inspection we want to let you guys know that so you know what to prepare for when you're building yours. Well, and so you don't panic if something like this does happen to you. I mean, in everything we've done in our lives, we feel like as long as you keep the line of communications mm -hmm. open, any problem can be worked out. And, and that holds true and for I, everything we've done. And I told yeah. the inspector that and when, when he called me up and he said, you know, and I, I told him, I, I said, he said, you're going to be the guinea pig. And I said, I'm fine with that. And, uh, and I told him, I told him right then, I said, as long as we can communicate like this and be open and honest with each other, right. I said, I feel like we can work through anything. And he assured me that would be the case. Uh, super nice fella. Well, and he offered a few solutions and we offered a few solutions. We talked about those and came up with what was the best route mm -hmm. for us to get everything approved and continue moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was a big, big help. And I think it'll be a help further Later. down the road too. Mm -hmm. But the good news is we did get, uh, even though we get installed on a lot of things, you know, that set us back a week. We didn't have any work done waiting on that permit because, I mean, it stops everything when that happens. Right. Uh, but we are supposed to be on track to finally get the steel post erected next week. I know it feels like I've been saying that for a month. Um, but he did approve, you know, what we what we didn't fail is he did approve our temporary power. Yes. So, so the power, power company now. has come out there. They blazed up through the trees and run our power lines. They've got our power pole up. So we do have power. We're one step closer to being able to go take our camper over there. Yes, that is our goal. Mm -hmm. The well was already supposed to be in. It was supposed to be in a few weeks ago. But it's been but delayed we as well. talked to them, mm -hmm. uh, gosh, I guess about Last a week, week. ago. Mm -hmm. And they had some equipment failures, uh, and of course, you know, the rain set them behind too, so they're running behind. We was hoping to get it in this past week, but they didn't make it there. So, fingers crossed, we'll get a well this coming week. Yeah, we're going to call them again Monday, and hopefully we're on the schedule for this week, barring, you know, anything else going on. Maybe we can get the well in. If we can get the well in, we're clear to take our camper over there then, because now we have power. We already have our, sewer, our septic tank put in. Mm -hmm. And all we've been waiting on is water. Yep. And so we, we almost started to go ahead and take our camper over <laughs> there today yeah. and just have it set up so we can spend some of the nights over there so that when we have workers coming in first thing in the morning, we'll we're, be there. Close, right? But, uh, you know, I, I, having to fill the fresh water tanks and not having a way to fill the fresh water tank after we run out, right. I, I'm kind of hesitant to take it over just yet. And I, and I don't want it to get in the way if they bring in more steel in. This truss is supposed to be coming any time, and so I'm trying to keep it out of the way too. So. So that's where we're at with that. I'll show you a little clip of where the power company pulled in. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. most of the work that they did was off camera, and <laughs> I wasn't there that day. Um, right. we, I had a couple of last trips to Emory, 
and uh, I got next week to get my uh, test, results. test results. But right now, from what we're seeing online, it's looking like everything's clear. Mm -hmm. And so Good hopefully news. now I'll have to go every six months for that. Yay. So if you don't know what I'm talking about there, if you're newcomers to this page, I know this. Uh, I've got a whole cancer series out there where uh, I was diagnosed with cancer two years ago. Mm -hmm. And so I won't go into a lot of detail of that here because most people hear about the Barnuminium. Well, and that's what kind of led us down this Barnuminium yes, path. Yes, that's why, that's why and, we're here. That's the so reason why I do mention it. But. Is, as our name, our roundabout life implies, we have a lot of different venues and a lot of different roads that have led us to where we are. And, and we try to document those, but obviously yeah. you've got to go find those. <laughs> yeah, but they're, they're clearly labeled. They're if, if you're interested yeah. in that, go out there and check it out. If you're not, that's stick fine. around here. Yeah. We hope to have some great footage this next week. We're heading up back over to LJ in the morning, mm -hmm. and uh, the builder's supposed to be there around 10-ish or so. Once he gets his crew rounded up and gets his equipment loaded up, he'll be there and hopefully start standing some steel next week. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that'll be a cool video, barring anything going wrong. Very excited. Uh, every time I say that it's going up, something <laughs> happens, so I don't want to jinx it. But, yeah. but guys, just stay tuned. We did get all of our... Uh, our faucets and mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff ordered this week and I know before anybody criticized me they're like you ain't even got the building up yet why are you mm -hmm. buying that stuff I'll tell you why because it was on sale yes so we're coming up on Memorial Day yep. and so if you guys are on a budget we're on a budget I think everybody's on a budget everybody knows what the, uh, building costs are doing right now they do nothing but go up yep. and so they put them on sale last week and so we went down there and picked out all of our stuff, went down and bought it yesterday, and we're just storing it here in a closet here at our house. And uh, so we're, we're moving on that, and so that's just a, you know one, one of our tidbits of information. You know, Shop you, the sales. Especially yeah. around the holidays. You know, all these uh, home improvement stores, you know, they love their sales. They love to get you in the store. And so watch for those sales if you're on a budget. We saved just on the faucets alone 120 bucks by catching them on sale. Mm -hmm. So, you know, 120 bucks is 120 bucks. You know, well, and another tip as far as that's concerned is we do a lot of shopping at Southeastern Salvage yeah. um, up in Chattanooga, Tennessee, since we're in the northern part of Georgia. And so we were able to find they have doors, they have mm -hmm. hardware, um, rugs and furniture, obviously. But what we did go ahead and buy is our barn door um, hardware. Yeah. because they had those in stock and they had a great price on them better than we found anywhere else so we did go ahead and buy those and put that up as well yeah so we're always keeping our eyes open shopping around watching for sales and even though we're not ready for the faucets and everything yet mm -hmm. you know you can't pass up a good sale we know right. what we want we, you know we've got the plans out so we know how many of each things we need so we just went ahead and bought them and saved some money and we'll put them back and if you have the place to store those um i mean the, some of these people who are building barn dominiums it can span years hopefully ours doesn't take that yes. long but but if you do plan to do something in the next few years and you have the ability to store some things go ahead and spread that cost out over those years and yeah. make it a little bit more affordable yeah because we told you in the last video we went ahead and ordered our, our windows from uh, Appalachian Supply over in LJ, Georgia, a local company there. Mm -hmm. But when we priced, we want sliding doors. And when mm -hmm. we priced those, they was uh, they was anywhere from eleven $1 hundred to two thousand dollars a piece, and we right. need two of we them, guys. Them. And so that just seemed. I mean, we we only paid. You, if you watched the last videos, we only paid like eighty five hundred dollars for all, all the windows. windows. All of them. <laughs> and so uh, you know, to pay half that for two sliding doors seemed outrageous to us. Right. Now we are going with white windows inside black outside which mm -hmm. is what's it's driving that cost order. up but we found at Lowe's there is a reliable built sliding doors mm -hmm. for $329 they're mm -hmm. six foot wide 80 inches tall which, which is, is pretty exactly standard, what we wanted which is exactly yeah. what we had drawn for the plans we found them for $329 mm -hmm. now it's wide on both sides but they're vinyl and so before we bought them, we actually went and did some tests and uh, we, we bought some vinyl products that was the same kind of vinyl as these doors was. Yep, the shiny vinyl, you know, just like the outside of and, these doors. And, and, you know, this is my painting pro here. <laughs> she paints everything. And so we did some tests on it and we feel 99% certain we can paint these doors black on the outside. And we saved, you know, thousands, like a thousand dollars a door. Yeah. And so even if we screw it up, and have to go buy another door. <laughs> we're, still, we're still cheaper than buying the other doors that we was quoted, you know, between eleven and two thousand dollars. Well, and a disclaimer there: they will tell you that you probably should not paint a vinyl door. Mm -hmm. It is doable, but there are specific paints. So, so please, you know, do that at your own risk. Yeah, now, now, and I'll tell you why they say that because 
being vinyl doors and being black, obviously, you know, black's going to get hotter in the sun. Mm -hmm. And so the theory is, is that the vinyl will warp and the door right. will warp. And, and it, can, it happens, could let the, the gas, crack. well, it could let the gas escape between the two mm -hmm. sets of windows that, that makes a thermopane window. Our doors are going to be under a 12 foot porch awning. So our doors will never get direct sunlight. So they'll never get direct sunlight. Right. And the way we've got our house turned, the sun doesn't rise and set on these doors, and so it's not going to reach these doors. So we don't have that worry of, of direct sun being on these doors, and that's the reason why we think we can make it work. Well, and we, we also, may be wrong, and if we are and it screws we'll up, you know, we'll let yeah. you know. Because we're going to show you us painting them here eventually. So. We also um, checked into all the different types of pa paint as well to make sure that we got a paint that was specifically for vinyl and, and that had a primer included so that, that it does adhere to that vinyl without any issues. And so far our test piece has done very well. Yeah, and so we're gonna cut this video here and uh, try to get you some more exciting stuff next week. So make sure you're tuning in. Hopefully next week we get some steel going up and that'll be awesome to see. Yep. Hopefully the trusses are coming in anytime. Hopefully the well gets in this week and we'll get the camper over there so we can show you something going on for a change to just sitting here talking. <laughs> yes. Uh, so anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, I'm not going to put up the prices of the door, the sliding doors and the, and the fixtures just yet yep. because I've still got a couple of them on order. They didn't have everything we needed in the store on the mm -hmm. fixtures, so we actually had to order some online and have them delivered. But we will reveal all those numbers. As soon as we get yes. everything everything together, we will reveal those numbers and add them to, to the numbers of, uh, I think it was last week's episode, or two, two, two episodes ago. ago. Mm -hmm. And so we'll keep a running total of everything we're, we, we've done so far. Right now, I think on the last the last video we showed numbers, we was seventy something thousand dollars into it, and we spent a couple thousand dollars more on these fixtures and stuff since then. So, but we'll keep you up to date on all the figures, and you know if anything else happens as far as we're going through the permitting process, the building process, we'll be sure to let you know every week when something new pops up. For sure. Stay tuned, hit that subscribe button so you know when new videos coming out. I know we've gotten a lot of attention from other people wanting to build Barnum mm -hmm. and some of them have actually have emailed us and texted us. And well, and some in our area us. as well. Yeah, yeah. you know, want to know when the next video is going to come out. Mm -hmm. If you hit that subscribe button, it'll You'll let know. you know. Yeah. So make sure you tune in, and uh, thanks for your support, guys. See ya. Focus our eyes on the journey. Stepping time. into the unknown. Waving goodbye <laughs> to our worry <laughs> So we run wild <laughs> And free